Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about which uh, is my uh, favorite horror film. Um, this is a film I have talked about before, but it was one of the early, you know, episodes of this series that, uh, and I haven't really talked about it. I haven't even talked about the sequels much. Um, actually, I haven't talked about the sequels at all, but maybe one day I will. But, uh, until then, uh, I just want to just have another video about Jaws. This is the Blu-ray from 2012, and this is the new 4K Blu-ray set, uh, which has a cool booklet in here, um, which uh, I... I really enjoy. Um, it's also uh, another Blu-ray or another booklet I have from the 30th anniversary edition of this film. Um, and yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite films of all time. It's my second favorite film of all time. Um, Star Wars, the original Star Wars, I, as I've talked about, is my favorite movie ever. Um, and, uh, yeah, if, if Star Wars did not exist, I'm happy it does, but if it didn't exist, I'm very confident in saying that this film would definitely be my favorite, uh, film of all time. Um, I also would, uh, but, you know, being a second favorite, um, I think that's great, too, um. To me, uh, you know, I might have mentioned this earlier in my previous video, but I've, uh, but this was the film that really scared me the most. This is the one I was genuinely terrified at. It's, um, and I had it on VHS when I was six years old. It was the 20th twenty fifth anniversary, not the twentieth. It was the twenty fifth anniversary of the film. It was two VHS tapes second tape had like special features that the DVD would have, which I later got, but then when I got the 30th anniversary, I then uh, gave that film to family members of um, mine. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, the movie, you know, it, it really creeped me out and disturbed me, and I thought it was interesting, especially since I love sharks, I always have, um, and, uh, I got to the part where Alex Kintner was about to get eaten by the shark, and just before he gets attacked, I turned the movie off, and I didn't watch it for four years, um, now I did close my eyes, and then put my hands over my ears, uh, just enough to where I can, I can hear it, but it's not as audible or loud if I hadn't put my hands on my ears uh, when Chris he was being attacked by the shark um, and just the way that was done is just man that's just brutal and you know I think it's more effective that way uh, to not see the shark uh, especially since the the way that scene was supposed to go we're supposed to see the shark basically launch out of the water with her in her mouth, and he, she just gets ripped apart by the shark. That, uh, you know, sure would have been really terrifying, but you know, that would be a jump scare. You know, once you know it, it's not really going to be as effective, whereas if you don't see the shark, you're be, and you're watching her just get pulled down and moved around, uh, I think that's a bit more effective, because... That's what often happens with shark attacks. People usually don't see it um, until it's until the shark is on them. And if they do, it might be they see a dark shape in the water. And if they turn or blink and look uh, where it was, it can be gone. And then it's you know can come back and uh, bite them uh, or. And so, yeah, this, uh, and I think because of my love of sharks, 
and also knowing that there is always the possibility they could, you know, bite or attack you, even though, you know, there are very few shark attacks every year, and of the ones there are, very few are fatal. Um, and so from that, I it's just, you know, I think that really just got to me a lot better than, say, like, a Friday the 13th or Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street or Scream or any of the other horror films or slasher films. You know, I think because of my love of sharks, that really affected me quite a bit. Um, and I also came to the conclusion that the music was really what freaked me out. You know, it wasn't just the visuals and seeing what was happening with the first attack and just how realistic that would be. And, you know, it's just... Yeah, it's just... Uh, that alone is is quite effective, but the music really makes it effective. That theme, uh, the famous theme of John Williams, is just you know you definitely deserve the Academy Award for the score for this film. Uh, but yeah, this uh, so this is what also. Um, Yeah, I, I, it just really freaked me out. Finally able to watch it uh, all the way through when I was 10. And I figured out the music really frightened me when I rewatched it right afterwards. And I was able to do that because it was summertime. And I think this was also a weekend, so I was able to do that with you no know, problem of having to do anything the following day. And yeah, and upon my realization that the music is really what affected me not just the visual aspect of the shark attacking her it just really got got to me and you know this is incredible this is just an incredible film um, I would also say this is my favorite Spielberg film um, I just think this film really has all the right things of Spielberg you know has nice family moments, which Spielberg is known for in his films, and it has the right suspense and thrills that help the, bring out the horror uh, that occurs in the film. And of course, it's am that's amplified by the score, um, and also the performances. You know, Roy Scheider is incredible. Robert Shaw is fantastic. Richard Dreyfuss is both of those things as well as Scheider and uh, Shaw. And everybody is really incredible, you know. It's just fantastic. Everyone puts out their best, and especially when you know the production problems this film had. You know, this is really an astounding film. Um... And this was the first film, obviously, to make over a hundred million dollars, which would later be surpassed with, you know, Star Wars two years later. Um, I find it interesting how Steven Spielberg and George Lucas are very good friends, and they made the first two films to make over a hundred million dollars. You know, they made like the first blockbusters. Um, I don't know. I just think that's just cool. Uh, yeah. Though people do think that because of the popularity of Jaws and Star Wars, the industry shifted, and uh, and not for the best, but I don't know. I think in a way that the shift people see around that time with the when the release of Jaws and you know Star Wars came out, I think that was always going to happen at some point. It just happened to be that Jaws and Star Wars were the films that really helped push that shift. You know, if it wasn't Star Wars and Jaws, probably would have been something else. Um, what that film would have been, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, Jaws is just as impactful to the culture as Star Wars is. Um, uh, this film won three Academy Awards, lost Best Picture to One Flew of a Cuckoo's Nest, um, and, um, you know, I 
don't totally agree with it because then again, I'm biased. You know, I love Jaws. It's my second favorite movie of all time. My favorite horror film. My favorite film from Spielberg and basically all the cast members in this film. Though, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that. You know, this was this is Roy Scheider's best performance or Richard Dreyfuss's best performance. No, this is very close, I would say, to their best performances. Um, uh, I think Scheider's, for me, would be all that jazz, which I'd like to talk about at one point. That'd be a great film to really just talk about. Um, but yeah, this... Uh, uh, but yeah, the, the, everyone just put out their best, and... Um, you know, it was acknowledged for Best Picture, which is great. Um, Spielberg didn't get nominated for Best Director. Unfortunately, the film didn't get adapted screenplay. Um, especially since, you know, the book this film is based on. I think the film is better than the book. You know, there's a lot of things in the book that don't really need to be there. Um, Mrs. Brody and Hooper have an affair. She has an affair with him. Quint is essentially Ahab, Captain Ahab, instead of the, hunting the great white shark, or hunt great white whale, he's hunting the great white shark. Uh, yes, yes, Ahab hunted the great white shark. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, flub aside, um, I, uh, yeah, and then there's this whole aspect of the mayor owing money to the mob, and there's, like, corruption there. Um, I guess that could be kind of an interesting angle to it, because, you know, you know, you know, that would give him another reason why the beaches need to be opened. You know, he owes the mob money. Uh, whereas, at least in the film, it's more a bit more sympathetic. He has the interest of the people that live there at heart and doesn't want their businesses uh, to fail and have to be on welfare until the following summer because, you know, you know, it's a, Amity Island is a place where people go to, you know, their beaches. People stay the summer there, particularly the 4th of July. You know, it's, you know, fun in the sun. You get to go to the beach and swim and have a great time. It, talking about there's a shark around, uh, there's been a, sh a shark attack or two, that's uh, not gonna make people really wanna stay there, not wanna uh, uh, go with the reservation of a hotel they have, or maybe they have a summer house, they go there so often that, yeah, maybe we're not gonna go there, and I'm not gonna, you know, spend X amount of money I've been saving up for my summer vacation there. Yeah. Yeah. At least in the film, the mayor, even though it is, it's kind of stupid that he doesn't close the beaches like he should, but then again, if that happened, then where would the movie be? You know, we've been following these characters for decent while, and the sharks wouldn't go elsewhere, and we're going to have to follow new characters, that's not going to be probably as interesting. Um, you know, it, gets, it really gets that little small-town feel in this. You know, you root for these characters to be able to overcome this problem. You want them to get rid of this problem. And, uh, yeah, the, everything in this film is just incredible. I love this film. I've actually seen this on the big screen a couple of times. Um, it's out in theaters now, uh, you know, in certain theaters for, you know, bring back people to the movie theaters uh, where I live. I hope to be able to see that film, uh, see this again for its 45th anniversary. Um, though I did see it five years ago for its 40th anniversary, and that was incredible. This is just one of those films that I would just love to see whenever I can. You know, it's just, it's just, it's that kind of film. Um, yeah, this is, this is all uh, just incredible. 
Um, but also, you know, I think this film regarding, like I mentioned, awards earlier, I think, you know, Roy Scheider and uh, Robert Shaw definitely should have, at the very least, been nominated for Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor. You know, their performance were performances were just as great as the winners and other nominees. Um, Robert Shaw, I think, definitely could have given a run for every nominee's money for if he was nominated for uh, Jaws. I'm sure some might not think. Uh, you know, the same about Roy Scheider and, you know, in Jaws against, you know, Jack Nicholson and one for a cuckoo's nest. But for me, um, I've, all, I, I've said this a couple of times, I think the, at times there should be like, you know, ties for things like acting. Um, at one point there, there have been two ties, uh, you know, for actor and best actor and best actress. I think we could probably find some uh, other performances in any of the four categories where, you know, two people were just as great, regardless if they were nominated or not. <clears throat> you know, I think Roy Scheider would have been just as deserving of the Oscar as Jack Nicholson. And I think, you know, hey, of course, Roy Scheider couldn't have because he wasn't nominated. Same with Robert Shaw, but had both of them been nominated for Best Actor and Best Supporting Actor, I think it would have been really cool to see, you know, Scheider and Nicholson winning Oscars, and, you know, one at a time and giving a sp speech for their film and, you know, thanking everybody. Um, I think Brad Dorif in, uh, in One for the Cuckoo's Nest and, um, Robert Shaw and Jaws could have tied. I know Brad Dorff didn't win. You know, uh, uh, George Burns for the Sunshine Boys won, if I recall correctly. Um, that was a fine film, and he did a fine job, though uh, I always got the sense that that was sort of like a, uh, you know, you know, he was, you know, older at that point. They, you know, wanted to acknowledge George Burns. Um, because, you know, they really hadn't before. So give it to him now, and there we go. Um, which that does happen at times, as we've seen with awards, but, you know, 1975 did have a big year <clears throat> for film, so hey. Uh, yeah, this, uh, this is a really... Beloved film for myself and so many others. Uh, I could keep going on and on, but words can only do so much. Um, just watching it is the best way to do the film justice. Um, and if you haven't, um, be a bit surprising if, if you've watched all this way, but hey. Maybe I've helped pique your interest in watching it, or maybe not. Um, but this film is incredible. It's a great film. If you haven't watched it, uh, at least see it once. See what you think. I know it might not be as scary uh, in today's age when it comes to horror films and films that uh, have suspense. And if you're not quite young, you know, like I was when I first saw it, um, you know, it might not be very scary, but um, hopefully you'll enjoy it all the way, even if you're not scared. Um, yeah, I just love this film. I think it's a, an incredible film. It is a masterpiece. Spielberg's best film he's ever made, in my opinion. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, Schindler's List will be amongst the top for a lot of people. Some might say Saving Private Ryan, but uh, for me it's it's Jaws. It's always been Jaws since I've watched it. Um, and seen some of his other works that at the time I was a bit too young to see. Um, like Schindler's List. 
in Saving Private Ryan. But, you know, I, I enjoy those films, and I love this film so much. Um, obviously, I'm wearing this, and it's not just because of Jaws, but I just really love this shirt, and I... And it, uh, of course, fit this occasion. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really love this film, and I hope to see this on the big screen again this year. Um, be cool if it could be this month, but you know, I'm not gonna definitely say that will happen. But who knows? Um, but yeah, if you ever have the chance to see this on the big screen. I say do it. It's an incredible experience to have, and it's really worth it. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I could, I've just been talking and about this film so much. I'm happy I've been able to talk about a film I love that I haven't talked about as much, which I think I probably should have before now, more so than just <clears throat> like one video really dedicated to it, then maybe mention Jaws a, a time or two in passing it in various other videos I've made. Uh, you know, not really dwelling on it too much, like in the first proper video I made in this video. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you liked this video. Um, might not have been all that uh, insightful with information about the film, but if you're a big fan of it, you probably know a lot about the film. Um, I just wanted to give more of my perspective of how, why I love this film so much. Um, um, and hopefully I will uh, talk about the sequels at some point. Um, might not be in the near future, but um, yeah. Definitely some time in the future, I think, would be a good bet. Um, and with that, I would just like to say uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, hope you all have a great day, <clears throat> a great weekend, and a great week. And we'll see you all next time.